Hello, today I'd like to make a video on how to compression test a Honda B-Series engine. Uh, I'm just going to go over some things that you'll need. Uh, manual starter, battery, compression tester, jumper cables, uh, a wire for the starter signal, an OEM starter bolt, and a hollow cylinder of some sort to space the starter from the block about an inch and three-eighths. That's something that the bolt can go through and will have enough support for the starter. So here it is installed. Um, one thing that you want to make sure of is that this bolt is tight because it, the starter will move. You will have to slide it back and tighten the bolt again. It, it won't be tight enough the first time ago. But you want to make sure that the the gear here isn't too far to the right. You want to make sure it's gapped out enough, and you can actually move it with your hand to make sure that it's going to line up with the with the teeth of the flywheel. And this looks like it should be good. It it will take a. You might not get it the first time, but it's not going to hurt anything if it doesn't lock in. It's just going to make a pretty horrible noise, <laughs> but it will be okay. Just move the starter, get it lined up, and you can go on from there. So how I found that the spacing between the block and the starter needs to be 2 inches 3 eighths is I took a measure tape, brought it over to my trans, measured distance from the starter to the bell housing, and 2 and 3 eighths. That doesn't need to be 100% accurate, you know, you can go a little more, a little less. It's not going to hurt anything. As long as the gears mesh and the crank rotates, you'll be fine. As for setting up the battery, it's pretty straightforward. You just want to go positive terminal to positive terminal on the starter. Ground to ground. I use the OEM ground location just for video purposes. You can ground it to anything. And the signal wire, just get it attached. It doesn't need to be alligator clips. You can use your hand if you'd like. Get it attached to the signal um, post. And to spin the engine, just take this and touch it to the positive. So like I said, you're not going to get this lined up first try. As you saw in the last clip, the flywheel didn't rotate. This uh, The gear just kind of hit and spun, didn't lock in. So I actually moved the gear a little bit further away from the flywheel, made sure it meshed with my fingers, and you'll see now that it does rotate. Oops, sorry. Easy peasy. So now that you've finished wiring up the engine and you can make the crank spin, you want to take your compression tester, uh, take the gauge off, makes it easier, put it down in the cylinder that you would like to compression test, make sure it's snug, it doesn't need to be crazy, tie it your gloves, make sure the gauge is somewhere that you can see it, and turn the engine over. Now before you start the compression test, you want to make sure that there's no restriction at the intake manifold, the exhaust manifold, or in the combustion chamber. So you want to remove all the spark plugs, make sure nothing's on the exhaust, which this is just the manifold, it's fine. And on the intake manifold, you want to make sure that the throttle body is wide open. It's not, you don't need to, but it makes the engine turn over easier, it's easier on your battery, it'll last longer, so find something that can hold the throttle body open. I used a pair of vice grips. You can use anything from like rubber bands or a piece of rope or a zip tie. So here we go. I'm going to compression test cylinder one. I've actually gone through all four cylinders and uh, made sure that they were all good before making this video. So I'll just show you for example. Connecting the starter wire to the positive post. And that's that. As you can see, cylinder one is good at a little above 190, which is I'm happy with. And all four cylinders come in at about that same uh, number. So we're good.
hope this video helps some people. I know when I first had to compression test an engine outside of the car, I used the bell housing of a transmission, brought the starter, did that, and that was kind of a pain, and uh, I've learned that that's kind of unnecessary, and it's much easier just to get the starter. You may not have a bell housing available, so this is pretty much possible for anybody that wants to compression test an engine. You know, before you buy it, you bring a battery, bring a starter, and you can pretty much compression test an engine that anybody has in their garage and make sure it's good before you buy it, which is great.